Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on and bless his name on this morning. Oh, we can do better than that. We're in the house of the Lord. Come on and rest to your feet and bless his name this morning. Come into the Lord's house this morning, for it's going to rain, and it's going to rain down fire this morning. It's going to rain, so come on and bless his holy name. Oh, bless him in the sanctuary. Oh, bless him. Bless him. Oh, bless him. Oh, bless him him this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I come to rejoice. I don't know about you, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus on this morning because God has been good. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get just two of you just to begin to lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My job is to welcome. Father, we thank you today. We give you grace. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for just being God. We open up our mouth today and we give you worship and we give you praise today. And we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We bind the enemy today. We bind the spirit, amen, of depression. We bind the spirit of lying. We bind the spirit of gossip. Have your way today, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. Open up your mouth and give God. All right, you may be seated. Thank you, everyone. Uh, The FAA, Federal Aviation Administration is suggesting for all airlines um, to re-estimate passengers and weight. Uh, Because they're saying that passengers are a little heavier now. (laughs) And the baggages that they're bringing on with them are a tad bit heavier. And so what they are suggesting is that, Mother Hall, this affects flight and may require some passengers, if you go to the airport, it may require you to leave your baggage um, because uh, the weight is too heavy. The problem is that it's not that the plane can't fly but the excess weight makes it difficult to lift. And it makes it difficult to get people to their next destination. And, and what's, what's happening here is that we, we got too much weight on us, too much spiritual weight. And, and we, we didn't say you couldn't fly, but it's difficult for you to fly with an excess weight. And, 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 and what I feel, musicians, is that there, there has to be a praise that must go forth today to lift off excess. 
excess spiritual weight. I want you to open up your mouth today and say, I'm going to release it today. Anything that's not supposed to be attached to me is excess weight. And, and, and I'm decreeing today that if you can open up your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. The weight has to be removed. Now listen, if you're sitting beside somebody that got excess weight, I'm telling you now, move. Because you can't afford to be around folks that's carrying extra baggage. Open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm going to bless your name anyhow. Now this time, put some preaching in your voice and say, Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now come on and open up your mouth and give him glory. And for those of you that don't believe it, the Bible says, let us lay aside. Oh, I do have a church. I was trying to figure it out. Come on and preach to your neighbor and say, let's lay aside every weight that so easily beset us. I can't carry mine and yours. Hallelujah. Say that go shot. Sometimes you gotta just dance it off. No wonder it's called dance off, Gail. You dance off excess stuff that don't belong. I'm gonna give you about fifth, about 30 seconds to give God a dance, give God a shout, open up your mouth and give him praise and dance it off. Have a seat, please. Please, let me. Say, share something with you today. Um, listen, um, this week has been one of the roughest weeks I have ever had in my life. And I'm going to share something with you that today that's going to really think about a couple of things, particularly you, those of you that are very judgmental of people. I like to talk about half of stories when you don't know the whole matter. You don't, you don't know what people are going through. And so you ain't God. And it, it would behoove you to stop saying, giving advice when you don't know the whole story. This week, I woke up Monday morning very heavy in my spirit. And the enemy said to me, all 
of stuff that's going on. You know, folks bad mouthing you, talking about you. The enemy whispered these words in my in my spirit, Deacon Hector. Man, go ahead on and kill yourself. And you know, I'm I'm depressed already. I was already having a moment. And I said, I said, Pastor Gretchen, I said, devil, you a liar. You no, I don't roll like that. Devil, you a liar. So I got dressed. It's like five in the morning. Suddenly I got an email from a member. It said to me, I was awakened by a dream about you. And she said, Pastor, I'm praying for you. She said, people not going to understand you, but God got you. Just She was encouraging me in the email. I read the email, and I was like, hmm, that's strange. The enemy did this. Got dressed. Get ready to hit on my business. Got in the car. And I was driving Apostle. And the enemy spoke to me again. He said, now, do it. And I said, listen. And he said, do it. And, and the problem is, Mother Hall, Mother Parker, was that I was listening to this voice. And before I knew it, Teresa, I came to a, to a four-way intersection, and because I was in tune to this voice, I ran a red light. I ran the red light. And, and when I ran this red light, um, if I had got there maybe a second sooner, I would have lost my life. And I got through the light, and I'm looking, and people like, what you doing? What you doing? And I snapped out of it, Elder Hattie. And I had to pull over, and I pulled over, and I was like, I was gasping for, for my air. I was, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, what happened to me? And for a split second, I lent my mind and my ear to the enemy. I looked dead at the light and knew it was red, but it had me in a trance. And I came to it and I started, I had to pull over and I was sweating and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Now, get this, the enemy that I thought I rebuked was still talking to me. And I had to pull over, and I was, I was guessing, if, and I started crying because I started thinking, this is too much for me. And the Lord said to me, don't you let people kill you. Y'all missed this. I, I was so depressed about what I heard previously that the enemy found an avenue to my spirit. And I'm safe. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. And I shout. And I worship. But for a moment, Elder had it. The enemy got me. Now, some of you probably saying, yeah, but you probably just, nah. I'm saying, telling you that, I'm telling you something. The enemy is real. And he will use people. And God said to me, don't let these people kill you. Let them leave if they want to leave. 
Y'all ain't hearing me. Let them talk if they want to talk. They got so much to say about everything. Let them go. But don't you let them kill you. So, so my first piece today, because my title of this message is putting the pieces back together. My first piece is, I, I ain't going to let nobody kill me. You can say what you want to say. And there's so much stuff that I read and I want to reply to, but I know the side. I know a side too. And so I listen, and God said to me, don't you let these people kill you. About 15 minutes later, one of the pastors called me and was like, Pastor, you all right? And I shared this experience, and this pastor went up in tongues. And she was speaking in tongues. And she was saying to me, Pastor, don't you let these people kill you. You uprooting spirits. And when that happens, those who you thought were on your side are going to come against you. So I'm saying, the first piece of that, you can say what you want. It is not going to bother me because I know who I am. Are y'all hearing me? And I know what God has brought me through. And I ain't got to prove nothing to you. Oh, my goodness. You, you ain't got no heaven. You ain't got no hell to put me in. So I ain't got to prove nothing. I know. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, Teresa, let me tell you something. I'm not a bad person. But I've done some bad things in my life. But, but if, if you're going to hold me to that, what I used to do? You got to get off this boat. See, see, a lot of people don't want their pastor to preach it like this. But I'm the pastor that's going to tell you, if you ain't happy here, there are plenty of churches that you can go in and uproot, but not here. We ain't begging you to do nothing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's too much strife and too much contention among us that call ourselves brothers and sisters. How, how can we love each other and hate each other at the same time? I got a problem with this one. I got a problem with that one. Well, before you, before you tweet it, and before you Facebook it, go to the Lord about it. Because maybe you might be the solution to the problem. Yes, I'm saying to you, we talk too much. Do us a favor and be quiet and talk to God instead of sharing everything you know. You ain't going to like me today. I'm going to tell you something real good because I got to get to these graduates. That's my first point. My second point is this. Uh, you got to discern the call. Pastor, what does that mean? You got to discern the call. When people call you, Consider the call. Should I answer? But I don't have to answer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Should I answer this? Because most garbage is not given in person. Most garbage is shared by communication. So sometimes you got to, when you see that call coming... Lord, do I need to answer this call? What they gonna say? And some people, Barbara, are only calling to see if you heard what they said. Oh my goodness. They're, they're calling to see how you're going to react to their undertone. To their to their spiritual complications that they have in secret with you, but discuss it with everybody else, but can't come to you. 
So they're going to call you to see where your mind said at. And so where's, here's where we fail. We can answer. And we act like everything is all white. Right. And everything is good when it's not. If you have a problem with a person, a human being, fix it. Why are you, why are you preaching like this, Pastor? Because I almost lost my life. That might not mean nothing to you, but it means everything to me. And I would have been laying up here, and you would have been all on social media. He was such a good person. It's amazing how conversations change when you're gone. When you hear, you ain't got nothing to say good about them. But when they gone, oh, he was such a wonderful, she was such a wonderful pastor. Discern the call. Not everybody that's going to call you is going to call you to bless you. Not everybody that's going to call you is calling because they care about you. They're calling to see where you at spiritually. See if you're going to say something about what was said. And I had to watch myself, Deacon, because some folks, some members would call me to see what I know. Yeah, I know. But you ain't going to know I know. You ain't gonna pull me in your mess. Because you don't like Rosalind. You don't want me to not like Rosalind. The devil is alive. You ain't pull me in that. I've learned. I said this, and y'all ain't gonna like it. But it's true. I kept trying to figure out, John, why it was so much loyalty outside of the church than it is in. Why, why, why is it? That in the streets, you can find loyalty. But when you get in the house of the Lord, you got people that are, that are turn on you. At least in the street, if you didn't like me, you didn't deal with me. But in church, you will come get my hand and shout with me. Y'all ain't hearing me. And still not like me. I know you wonder, like, wow, really? Yeah, really. It happens. So what happened with me Monday and all this week, God shares with me, I'm putting the pieces back together. And the weight, you got to let it go. You almost lost your life trying to carry weight it's not even yours. No wonder you can't shout. Can I go deeper? No wonder you can't praise. I don't like the songs. That has nothing to do with a worship in your spirit. If you brought a worship in your spirit, it doesn't matter what song they sing. They can sing, oh, Mary had a little lamb. And you Because if you've got worship in you, but you're too weighed down. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. God says, I'm putting the pieces back together. I want you to hear this. And this is a different kind of message. The pieces that I'm putting together, the pieces you once had, you can't use them anymore. Oh, Lord. And that's what's been the problem. You've been trying to use pieces that God has rejected. And it doesn't work. I'm preaching to myself, deacon. I've been trying to use pieces. Oh, my God. That did not work. I want you to picture a puzzle. On a puzzle... You got the clouds, you got a store, you got a car, but the clouds doesn't cover the whole puzzle. And the problem is, the part of the puzzle where people came in, we're trying to put them in the parts that they don't fit. So, Pastor Parker, Pastor Gretchen, 
God says to me, Elder, Deacon, in this season, in this season, stop trying to push pieces together that don't fit. You know what happens, Elder Lawana? You damage the whole puzzle. And I'm not going to damage my life if I got to jam you to fit in somewhere. Not only do I damage my life, but I also damage yours. God is putting the pieces back together. Because I was broke up this week. I literally cried, mother, pastor. And I kept wondering, why did Pastor Matthew say, y'all, let's pray for Pastor Purcell? Let's see if you was on the prayer line. If y'all would pray for Pastor Purcell, y'all be watching TV, we be going up in prayer. And I kept wondering why. And now I understand. Because I'm at the part of the puzzle where the enemy is trying to kill me. And deacon, I know what the words say. Fret not thyself because of evil. I got that. But I was very wise this week. I didn't go anywhere. I was chilling out, being low-key. Because I know... Watch this. If he try once, he gonna try again. Stop lending the enemy your ear. Well, I didn't know. I know you didn't know. That's why I'm telling you. Stop lending the enemy your ear. If he can get your ear, he can get your spirit. And if he gets your spirit, he'll get your heart. And if he gets your heart, then everything that was spoken and that was said, it becomes a seed. And if the seed is ever planted in your heart, all he has to do is water it. And all of a sudden, you're going to start acting funny towards your brothers and sisters. Because of a seed. How you know, preacher? I'm experiencing it right now. I'm experiencing, Mother Parker, the sometiminess of those who call themselves saints. I'm experiencing right now, Jelani, the, the up and down and the back and forth mentally of people that call themselves men and women of God. And I had to step back, Deacon, to make sure I didn't do nothing. But it was a trick of the enemy because the enemy will have you thinking you done wrong when you ain't done nothing. I had to get this in my spirit, Pastor, pa Pastor Rosalind. Settle with the closure that has occurred. Well, what you mean? Because there was something in me that wanted them to come back to rail and say, I'm sorry. But we in the day now, but people are not going to say, I'm sorry, when they don't see they're wrong. Apostle, they're not going to apologize if their spirit has been lent to the enemy. They're not going to. But just because you won't apologize... That doesn't mean I'm going to stop being me. Now let me share something with you. And those two pieces. And let me share something else with you. In the book of Proverbs. There's a verse. And I believe it's going to bless you. God is putting the pieces back together again. We have, I have said this many times, 
And this is going to be my last clause because I want to turn it over to those who are going to recognize these graduates. The people outside of the church can't do anything with us in the church. I'm going this side. The people outside of the church, of your church, particularly your church, say that with me, my church. The people outside of my church, outside of where you worship, where you call yourself a member, they can't do anything about what goes on in here. But if that's the case, then why is there so much offense in here? In other words, let me put it the way y'all going to understand it because you're acting real deep like you're a Pharisee. I don't care who gossips about what goes on in here. The only way it can bring damage is if you bring it in. The same thing goes on in your own house. Both, most of y'all in here got some beautiful houses laid out. Beautiful. Marble. Colors I ain't never seen before. Furniture I ain't never seen before. You know, back in the day, they used to have furniture, but you had to have plastic on it. And when you sit down, you hear it. <laughs> Y'all got these beautiful houses. God have really blessed you. And, and some of you, if you can be honest, you didn't know you would be where you are now. But God has really blessed you. I, I've been to some of our members' houses, and I'm like, wow, you got it like this? Most of my members' houses, I mean, just highly favored and blessed. I'm like, you got it like this? It's like that? So I know God has connected me with some good people. But on the flip side, what's more important than what's on the inside? What's on the inside of your house? I'm not talking about your physical house now. I'm talking about what's on your spiritual house. Because you can have a decked out house with all kind of sin and pornography in it. But we're talking about your spiritual house now. And I want to say this to you, that just because a person may have a beautiful home and a beautiful car and all that, that doesn't mean that God has, you know, that they just all like that. They still human like you. God just blessed them. And God will bless you too. But, but, I say all that to say this. The same way you keep your house decked out, the same fortification you use for your own house, let's use it in this house. Oh, I forgot. You can only do that if your heart is in this house. So, I, God, the only thing that can offend and this mess and tear us up is what's already in here. I don't care about what people say outside of here. We got to deal with what's in here. What's your mess yourself? People coming in here to really hear a word. But all you're concerned about is what somebody wearing. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah, yeah, you got it all this and all that. But you're so concerned about what's going on up here. And, and, and this. And, you know, you, know, you know, I was reading 
reading something. And if I was very, very, very John Petty, I could be the pastor. Elder Brennan that could say, now, I want y'all to stop eating these mentos up here. Because I don't ever eat none. But that's so petty. I want you to think about what I'm saying. We, we, we broadcast the most pettiest stuff. And you a, and you a preacher. I know you don't like me. But I'm going to say it. You're a pastor. You're an elder. Why are you so petty? Why are you worried about Elder Brenda? For what? Why are you worried about Pastor Gretchen? For what? Why are you worried about Alice? The same strength that you are so utilizing on other people, if you would just use that for yourself, and, and why are we being messy? There's people coming in here that need a word. If the enemy deacon is talking to me, I know he's talking to some of y'all. If he's trying to get me to take myself out, then I know he's talking to y'all. And so, so, so when we get in here, people come here, they're really looking for something from the Lord. But you know what happens? Because of tradition and because of special privileges and because of titles, we lose them. Because they didn't wear what you thought they should have wore. The first time being in church, trying it out. And you go up to her, and you don't even know her, and you pull her skirt down. It's the last time we're going to see her. And she possibly was looking for a word. Ooh, y'all ain't liking me. Now, let me tell you what happens with this. This is the last piece. And this is in the Bible. This is in Proverbs 18 and 19. Listen to this. A brother offended is horror to be one than a strong city. I need y'all to pay attention to this. A brother that's offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Can we agree to something today? There's much offense in the church. Yes, we know offense must come. And woe to those they come by. But don't let, don't you let the enemy use you to offend people. You don't know what people are going through. I'm telling you. You don't know what they're fighting. If you ain't never got high, that ain't going to be, y'all ain't hearing me. That's not going to be your struggle. But that doesn't mean that you judge those who did get high. You ain't never had a taste of Grey Goose. Don't Google it. Wild turkey. Blue motorcycle, if, if that ain't never been your struggle, then, then don't judge those. I know the Lord will clean them up, but don't you judge them. Because why? Your judgmental, super saved self is 
is what brings offense. And let me say this to you. You know what the problem is? You offend people that ain't even saved. They're trying to get there. But you, in your mama's way, church, Boy, y'all don't like me today. Because it's not like the way this how this is how we used to do it. The times are changing. Can't you see what the pandemic has done? It has weeded out the tears. So we have to do ministry all separate now. We have to do it all different. So 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 let's love one another. Let's pray for one another. Because a brother offended is harder to be won. Including the ones you talk about. I want you to think about this for a minute. I know you're big and bad and you ain't scared of nobody. But can you share with the person that you're talking about, what you're sharing with everybody else? Can you tell them? I saw a pastor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I saw a pastor at Food Line with a little thing of alcohol. Well, did you ever think that it could have been sparkling white grape juice? <laughs> Same bottles. I've, this year, had so many phone calls about people that's just believing anything in every, about everybody. And I'm saying to you that if you believe anything, let's say something about you. Come on, I dare you to lift up your hands to the Lord. Regardless of what it looks like, I will lift my hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Yes, Lord.